आप स्टार्ट करा दीजिए ये ये चल गया इसका लिंक आप ही लगा लो आप आपको लगा दो ताकि तो शुरुआत कम से ज्यादा सर कुछ नहीं हम्म सर ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन और रेनिनेस अवर टुडे टॉपिक इज न्यूरो साइंस फॉर एवरीवन and then uh, first of all i request uh, professor to give me a few initial remarks so here good morning and uh, thanks for joining uh, as you know uh, we're just like uh, we think that we've been doing this kind of thing from 2016 and broadly we've been trying to do new and different things broadly by uh, guiding line is things that ought to be done but others are not doing So that is what we have been trying to do. Uh, the participation has been decreasing, and although we come from a background of independent university, where we were all told that open university and distance learning is for us, only face-to-face -face contact is real, and therefore we did this. We realized that now people are quite happy not having face-to-face -face contact and learning online or through resources or whatever. So we come to a state where this is going to be the last such meeting that we had. Uh, in future, I'm be continue, happy to continue to interact with people. But you are all welcome to my home, and whoever says that we like to meet, I'm quite happy because up to 20, 25 people we can organize and have a drawing room without any major problem. So that is one part. Uh, interestingly, the last session has also become very important. Uh, for the last few sessions, Rahul has been. leading discussions on knowledge about new matters and actually it's interesting that when you reflect we are all in education and all learning happens in the brain but the entire education system many p20 20 and cf 20 23 and whatever never talks about the brain at all so it's very interesting that the object with which we are dealing is something what we think also If you want to know, you are curious that what's the brain like? How does it remain at different stages of life, and so on, so forth? If you don't go to the internet or chat GPT or whatever, there is no way you will ever learn. If you go to your school and say, "I want to know about the brain," they say, "Only if you get into medical college after passing what medical, what's it called, meet." Or whatever, etc. And then in some year, in the neuroscience, they will teach you the neuroscience as specialization. Otherwise, the fact that you have from your birth a cerebrum, a cerebellum, all this, etc., you are not supposed to. It's a very funny kind of a system that people who have no idea of what they are doing are propounding what should be done, etc. And the harmful effects. Nobody documents that. I wish if I ever had enough. I am able to document the harmful effects of school on children. One remark by a teacher to a young child will incapacitate him for the rest of his life. So, you can't match me. You can't play the game. 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 And what is very interesting is that system, which is very important, I'm happy to criticize even the IITs. The IITs have an entrance exam for limited number of students. The exam has nothing to do with reality. They are saying what marks you got in physics, chemistry, and maths. Now tell me your marks of physics, chemistry, and maths on a class twelve syllabus. How does it show your engineering potential? And then depending on the marks, you will get your branch: electrical, mechanical, etc. Now even engineering people don't know the difference between electrical and mechanical. 
And I am saying this with seriousness because I have been involved in the process. In school of planning and architecture, for example, they actually take a test about your design, understanding, three dimensional projection, etc. They don't go by your marks in physics, chemistry, math. But chemical engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering, we will always be able to what you got on physics, chemistry, math, syllabus all at the same time. So, what we are trying to say is, and that's why we use the topic neuroscience for everyone, that let us go out and make everyone aware that you are born with a brain which almost keeps functioning till you die. And if you don't know how to use your brain, what can we say? And I was especially amused by another thing. There are birds which have wings but cannot fly. Right? Postage is a big example, EMU is a big example. There are many birds. What happened over time, they lost the ability to fly because there was no need to fly. So the dodo in Mauritius was always so safe. And then the French came and ate them up. That they never learned the thing about flying. We are coming to the same situation that the world around us is teaching us not to use our brains, to be indoctrinated, to be subjugated, or <laughs> according to what is prescribed in school. A very interesting educator, Guy Claxton, he has coined the word totitis for this. He says that unless it is taught in class, the person will not learn. And he said this is something which is the result of 16 years of school education, university education. That person is carrying the book. The book is before the in the library. Gives up. He won't read it because it has not been taught. So, the big thing that has emerged recently is the appreciation of neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. It throws everything into, out of the window. When you are saying at class 8, if you didn't do maths, you will never do maths. You will not even be taught maths. And what neurogenesis and neuroplasticity is saying is that you can generate neurons, you can learn new things, and so on and so forth. So the entire education system is a complete orthogonal to what the science is. So this session is an interesting session. Obviously, uh, these people will introduce us to the basic ideas. Then we can follow up, etc. But at least we have a certain idea what the brain looks like, how does it work, and so on. My current fascination is its quantum phenomena. And for the next few years, whatever I have, I'm going to do the same thing for quantum, bringing it to people. And I must say this because I've already triggered Rahul and Ramesh on that. This is what is classical neuroscience. But the fact of the matter is that the neurons are quantum particles. And then when we're talking connection, this classical thing of nerve impulse, etc. is one thing. The fact of the matter is that they are going to be quantum particles. And therefore some people are calling them neurons as quantum neurons. And quantum neuroscience is something which is on the horizon. I'm not talking pure theory because I just read an announcement from UK that the National Health Service in UK has already taken a decision that within the next five years, all brain scanners will be with quantum sensors. Today, brain scanning is MRI. So actually, when you want to look at what's inside the brain, there are two main tools. One is MRI and the other is EEG. EEG is electroencephalogram, MRI is magnetic resonance imaging. Interestingly, magnetic resonance imaging is a result of something which physicists did without any reference to biology. They looked at the spin, Ravi is the person, he got the Nobel Prize for detecting electron spin resonance and so on. And then they found that if you have very high magnetic fields, etc., then you can see that they are mostly water and from the tissue and you can figure out what's going on. And now MRI scan is a reasonably routine thing. Uh, MRI scan tells you which part of the brain is being lighted up or is active at that time. The EEG actually shows you what are the potentials of what's happening in the brain. One day in the future, we will be able to have both a full map of the brain, just like long years ago, Crick and Watson discovered genome and DNA map, etc., etc. The A, P, G, C, bonds, and so now we know, you know the genome. We can have a lot of things, and then CRISPR editing tools came, which could do genetic modifications, so on and so forth. In fact, recently they did this for somebody who was 
In fact, a whole class of people who had this thing, uh, cholesterol, they found out what is the gene which does it, and they predicted that, and then solved the problem of cholesterol, etc. So similarly, all brain limitations will be able to do because we'll have a brain map, what is going on on the brain map, and we also understand how these things are going to happen. So it's a very, very interesting new frontier. It's huge complexity because there are 86 billion neurons, each of them connected to 10,000 and so on and so forth. And this changes over time. We are used to the idea of that somebody is brilliant or genius or whatever, but it's different. So the fastest learning rate is when you are children. At the about, because the brain is from birth, at about two years of age, what happens is you have too much information, too much synaptic junctions, connections, and therefore there is something called synaptic pruning which happens. And that is why most of us do not remember very early childhood. You may remember up to five years, six years, but not because at that time the whole pruning that happens. And then at this stage of life, when you are old, there is a degeneration. So Alzheimer, dementia, Parkinson's, all these start coming because the cerebral region, the cerebellar region, etc. But interestingly, because of the understanding of neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, now people say if you are active, if your brain is being active, then in your old age, you can have this. And cognitive reserve is a concept which came up. So they found that there were many people who in their autopsy showed that the brains had been affected. But in the day-to-day -day behavior, they weren't. And it turns out that that is because of their cognitive reserve. And that is a very interesting thing in terms of, it's just like a financial reserve. When you're no longer having an active income, the financial reserve, you have a passive income. And you can use that to tide over the fact that you cannot have an active income. Financial reserve and support can come to you from fixed incomes, a pension plan, your children could support you, something else. But for the cognitive reserve, you have to create it yourself. Your children cannot say, take a part of my brain and use it, and so on and so forth. So we look forward to something very interesting. And uh, Dr. Ramesh Sharma and Rahul Agrawal have drawn up most of this thing. And you continue to be interactive like we are. Thank you, sir. Okay. So uh, we have divided this session into few sections. So first section is uh, going to be taken by uh, Professor Ashish Amal. So uh, I request him to take it over. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to begin with this famous story of uh, when the Pandavas, they were in exile and uh, they were feeling thirsty. So, they were looking for water, so they were looking for water, so they were looking for water. They were looking for water, so 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 they were looking बेगोश यार जो भी हुआ तो एक एक करके सारे सारे भाई आते रहे अपना फीलिंग प्राउड फीलिंग सो मच पावरफुल लाइक दैट हु कैन स्टॉप अस फ्रॉम टेकिंग वाटर फाइनली अल्टीमेटली व्हेन यू रीच रीच देयर एंड ही सॉ एवरीवन लाइंग अनकॉन्शियस सो ही आस्क्ड दैट ये किसने किया लाइक अदर सो वर सो पावरफुल अमंग ऑल द यूनिवर्स हाउ कैन इट हैपन विद देम so then yaks uh, appear and uh, they had a lot of uh, question answer sessions some of the questions were like uh, what is heavier than earth higher than heavens faster than wind and more numerous than straws so the story was that like uh, he replied uh, mother is heavier than earth the role of father is heavier than heavens uh, mind our brain mind in that sense man is more faster than wind and numerous than straws is our chin pai. Yeah. The worries. worries. 
they are more numerous and everybody has so many uh, ovaries about it. So this is related to some sort of that how we are interacting with uh, favorite thing, starting point for many of these things. Uh, there are actually 30 questions in that session. Each question is consisting of four parts. There are almost 100 questions. And the most famous of them are two. Uh, one of them is, what is the surprise? Came yesterday. And what you just said is, the surprise is that we see people dying every day, but we think that we will never die. And I am use that as a starting point for many things. So for example, I feel tempted because one of the topics that I pursue is about teaching learning and active learning at that. And my thing is that if today Yudhishthira was asked what is the surprise, he would say we know that the lecture is the most ineffective method of teaching and the learning pyramid shows that but still all is based on lectures. UGC has this thing, 75% attendance, this, that. and the educationists themselves have data saying that lecture is most ineffective. So that is the kind. The other thing is, of course, they ask me who is happy. And the answer is that the person who is in his home and is not on loan. And today we are all offering loans for you, study loan, this loan, that loan. <laughs> it's already a privacy. Somebody who's not gone out and somebody. And what is most interesting is that there is another question, what is the part? And it is very interesting, at that time also he said that no two regimes can agree among themselves. No this thing can happen and things which we heard, we forget, things which are repeated are lost in transmission, etc. And there was a Mahajano Yen Gata Sapantha. So follow the path trod by the great. So it's a very interesting thing and I am great fascinated about this time. So we we'll follow the path trod by the great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, how do we interact with the uh, uh, outer world? The, in the way that there are mechanical things are our hectic actions. We do something and uh, like walking, running, all those kind of activities and through thoughts. Thoughts are considered as the brain activity which is a sort of uh, using electrical impulses and uh, this is one of the famous example of showing that how with the help of technology the things they can be put in our brain and uh, can transform the personality into whatever the character that is being thought of at that time. But it is not only the Hollywood movies or the illusion or the uh, science fiction which is uh, uh, means, uh, projected there. This is a news from uh, uh, China that the employees brain waves They are reportedly being monitored in factories, state-owned enterprises and military across China. The technology is increased productivity and profitability with one company claiming the profits jumped by 300 million dollars. And this technology works by placing wireless sensors. They put those wireless sensors and with AI algorithms, they can find the incidence of the kind of emotions which the person uh, expresses. In this case, Google ke bhi, uh, or TensorFlow. When we talk about AI, ke hai, toh, par TensorFlow is one of the big platforms uh, which is, uh, provides us open source uh, codes. And uh, um, one is that कि इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस और इमोशंस को हम किस तरीके से कैप्चर कर सकते हैं विद हेल्प ऑफ एआई व्हिच इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन फेस टू फेस क्लासरूम्स नॉट पॉसिबल व्हेन इट इज डिफिकल्ट इफ यू हैव अ लार्ज क्लास वी कांट कीप ऑन चेकिंग द फेशियल इंप्रेशंस ऑफ इमोशंस ऑफ ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स बट हियर थ्रू फेस रिकॉग्निशन टेक्नोलॉजी इट कैन कैप्चर ऑल दोस थिंग्स 
there is a code on TensorFlow website, uh, which you can try uh, later on. So then this is the news from uh, Recode. Uh, they say that you can control this robot with your mind. And there are many lists. They have added as a thinking with your brain. We have a group in Turkey where they have established a uh, hum, uh, human computer interface lab and they have successfully demonstrated that experiment uh, with the help of our eye movement we can move the cursor without touching the mouse uh, on that so those signals they capture it and then so it has its implications uh, here that they have created a feedback system which can read the brain response while watching a robot at work and if the robot makes a mistake the person recognizes and then the signal is sent to the robot to correct that and there is no verbal cue or any haptic cue like pressing the button or something from there. Now this all comes down to brain, that what is brain? It's a chemical electrical uh, entity which has uh, thousands of neurons and chemical reactions. It's basically all chemistry inside the brain which is happening. So uh, let us see something about uh, the brain. It is time to have fun learning. And today I have an amazing lesson about a part of the human body that helps us all think with fun facts about the human brain. When talking about the power of the human brain, it is our command center to something called our central nervous system. Do you know what a central nervous system is? That is okay if you don't, because I can let you know. The central nervous system is made up of the brain, the spinal cord, and the optic nerves. The central nervous system controls how we think, how we move our bodies and control our senses like feeling, smelling, seeing, hearing, and more. Have you ever thought how much the brain weighs? The human brain weighs on average approximately 3.3 pounds. The human brain is the largest brain of all vertebrae when looking at body size. Now, let's take a look at the different parts of the human brain. The largest part of the human brain is the cerebrum. With the cerebrum, it is divided into two hemispheres. What is interesting is the left cerebrum controls the right side of your body and is responsible for a lot of things you do in school, like writing, math, logical thinking, and more. Now, the right cerebrum controls the left side of the body and is more artistic and creative. It plays a big part in art and music awareness and all around creativity. When looking underneath the cerebrum, there is another part of the brain called the brain stem. Now, just because it is a smaller part of the brain, it can definitely do big things and is very important. The brain stem is where the connections for the body's movement and senses send messages throughout the rest of the body. For example, the brain stem controls things that we really need, like the ability to breathe, our heartbeat, or another interesting thing is how we sweat. Right behind the brainstem is the cerebellum. Although the cerebellum does not start body movement, it helps to make it work smoothly and more effective. The cerebellum helps with posture, balance, speech, smooth muscular activity, and more. The outermost layer of the cerebrum is the cerebral cortex, which consists of four lobes. When you look at the cerebral cortex, like you're seeing here on the screen, I want to start from the front of the brain to the back of the brain. So with the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe is very important. That is because it controls a lot of our movement in our body and also a lot of our thinking that goes on as well. Then there is the parietal lobe and this part of the body deals with senses and things that you touch and feel all over your body. So if we were playing a video game, our frontal lobe would help us to reach for the video game controller, but our parietal lobe would help us to feel the controller vibrating. There is our occipital lobe, which helps us with vision and seeing things. So even though our eyes see things, our occipital lobe helps to process what we see. And then there's the last lobe of the brain, which is the temporal lobe. This is the part of your brain that is responsible for audio processing, 
So things you hear, like music, or if we were still talking about the video game, all of the cool sound effects coming from the video game go into your ears and is processed by this portion of your brain. Well, that is all for me, but I hope you enjoyed listening about fun facts about the human brain and how important it is to our day-to-day -day activities. That's all for me, and I'll see you next time. Uh, there have been uh, other uh, developments happening in this field to understand the complexity of brain, and particularly uh, MIT. They have done a lot of good work, including one in which I will show you later on. Uh, if you have seen that Harry Potter movie, in which that Hogwarts hat, they have successfully created that uh, hat, and uh, they claim that uh, we can make an understanding of what the person is thinking if you hear that head. So here they proved through their uh, uh, experiments the kind of uh, electrical communications going on within brain. And you can now record the neural activity of many cells in a neural circuit and hear them as they talk to each other. So these things uh, like uh, trying to understand the phone conversation by hearing only one person talk. Uh, having that electrode in it. So they try to do it without electrodes putting onto the uh, brain uh, cell. Now, there are other developments uh, how we can control a machine and in fact it's a very uh, you know old experiment as well. Uh, it is believed that in the early 70s a successful experiment was conducted using a monkey and a robotic arm and uh, the, through the uh, through the thought process of because the monkey they are very inquisitive in nature so the robot they could move the robotic arm uh, from the uh, signals on that so there has been a very uh, long standing debate many people they have tried to link the brain with a computer so what is your thought about it this brain computer can be uh, considered brain as a functional replica or as in uh, computer science. Nowadays, there is an interesting term, it is called as digital twins, which is a uh, web 3 technology of uh, 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 digital twins. So, the debate is your brain a computer? Not the current I mean, the brain cannot, I don't think it can be the current generation computer. Brain is much more distributed in its processing, is much more different from the human else kind of a structure. Right? And it has been a product of uh, so many uh, tens of thousands of years of, maybe billions of years of uh, evolution, uh, survival of the fittest and things. I think for those lives. So I don't think it can be compared to the current generation computer. But uh, maybe sometimes in the future we may uh, come up with uh, computers which do not play, do not have a central processing unit the way which today we have, and uh, have a much more complex structure than what it is existing currently. A difficult question. <laughs> difficult in the sense that the today's computer are the yes, computers which came much earlier are nowhere compared to the present day. So you can say that okay, I'd say Unisho Sarfa a computer, but one was computer to carry up in there. You got function like a life function. Somewhere nobody could have imagined that the computer. To begin with, that was the Fortran language for getting a Fortran formula translation. So they were designed only to solve engineering or mathematical equations. That was the end of it. Then later on, people thought they thought this is commerce view of that. So after pass, business uh, software on issue of okay. And at one time, we never thought that the computers will be source of uh, entertainment. The reason simple was at the time, 
that we did not have analog to distribute uh, ADC, that is analog to digital conversion and vice versa. <coughs> 8 bit was a big thing. I can't tell the XO highest of the Kappan Hoga. The things were, the technology was not there. And nobody ever thought that the entertainment industry will be taken over by the computer. So, this is not a big deal that it is not a hack. It is a dynamic process. What will happen now? We do not know. What will the computer do? One more thing is I want to add on to Arjun Mudra. I have, there is a view that computers, no matter how much they have changed to the country, it has not changed beyond that Intel architecture. वो आर्किटेक्चर वाइज कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी आ गई होगी और बट दे आर मोर और लेस सेम जो आज से आज के सेक्टर में जो काम करता था वही आज का ये मेरे फोन वाला और जो जो भी कंप्यूटर का आर्किटेक्चर वो वैसे ही और देखिए वैसे ही आर्किटेक्चर विल ऑलवेज रिमेन सेम ऑफ एनी तो उस पर चेंजेस आते हैं जैसे बट देयर वुड बी क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग देयर वुड बी अदर अभी क्वांटम वही क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग इज आल्सो द कंप्यूटर इट इज स्लोली एंड स्लोली the changes will come. So, our first color printer is a dogmatic printer. So, you can say, or you can say, or you can say, you can say, line printer, which is an exotized vector, simultaneously print. So, that time, no one thought about that the printer is a dogmatic printer. Now, you have a computer, a colored computer, a printer. So, these things are slowly coming. And this is an evolution process. जो हमारे प्रोग्रेस हो रही है उसी का हिस्सा है तो कंप्यूटर अगर आप कोई कंप्यूटर का अगर आप बेसिक प्रोफेसर कौन भी एग्री विद मी इसकी जो बेसिक साइंस है जो मैथमेटिक्स है वो तो 1930 से हमारे पास 1930 से तो कोई नई चीज नहीं आई है द ओनली थिंग इज वी आर नो ट्राइंग टू यूज द सेम प्रिंसिपल इन वेरियस स्टेट्स बट इफ यू वांट टू बी पहले जो कंप्यूटर अभी भी होते हैं There is the idea was that there is a central processing where everything has been centrally, right? Today you will see that the ML and AI are used in GPUs, right? In GPUs, it's a parallel processing and I think in the future, it will be that the GPUs will be bigger than the GPUs. Which means that the GPUs will be bigger than the GPUs, which means that the GPUs will be bigger than the GPUs, which means that the GPUs will be bigger than the GPUs, which means that the GPUs will be bigger than the GPUs, which means that the GPUs will be bigger. Then you will, the idea will get some point of time they are trying to emulate the way brain functions. There, there are multiple neurons at the same time working and trying to figure out the problem, right? Abhi nahi hai, but future ko ho sakta hai. See, jo aap ne kaha, agar aap ko shurwa ke computer yaad ho, agar aap ne dekha hai. Mujhe dhyan nia baara, there are used to be three different parts. Ek CPU ho sa sa, ek controller ho sa sa, ek ho sa. So, baad mein kya hua, ke ho tino ko jor liya gaya. जो जीपीयू की बात है ना कि इधर थी लेकिन वो धीरे-धीरे जैसे मैथमेटिक एमपीयू कहते हैं मैथमेटिकल प्रोसेसिंग जोड़ी जो होता है पहले नहीं एलयू मैथमेटिकल तो था लेकिन बाद में जो मैथमेटिकल जो हम सॉफ्टवेयर से काफी चीजें जो है इंप्लीमेंट कर देते हैं मल्टीप्लिकेशन है अब उसके प्रोसेसर आ गए मैथिंग भी गेम बहुत फास्ट है देखिए जैसे-जैसे नीड आती गई और जैसे-जैसे टेक्नोलॉजी बढ़ती चली नीड तो हमारे पास थी टेक्नोलॉजी थी अगर आप सोचे हैं ध्यान से आज को आपके पास ट्रिलियन यार आप आए का मेमोरी यूनिट है तो अगर आप पुराने जमाने में चले जाएं हैक्स ऑफ दो पीपल जिन्हों में आपकी सीरी ड्राइव है उसमें लेटरी का कोई लेना देना नहीं ना कोई कंप्यूटर नीड या इलेक्ट्रॉनिक जिसे म Going exactly at the same place, millions of times. This is wonder. अब तो कर्मों का बैरियर भी याद ही नहीं रहा। तो वो ज़्यादा बंदर था। और उसमें जो प्रोग्रेस हुई कि how quickly that has rewrite has can be placed near उससे आपकी मेमोरी का दर्शन बढ़ती जाएगी। That is 
because there is no zero, no cancellation, you will have to do that calculation 500 times the subtraction. If you could do that in normal arithmetic, 500 times subtraction, you would get the answer. So decimal system was a labor saving device. Then after the solution of the slide rule became more interesting because you could use the linearity of logarithms to do that. Then came the first set of things which are like uh, mechanical devices, of course. Any facet for the reduced ki, 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 Then came the other one. Chinese is one of them. Abacus. 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 So, so this is all. So now we are doing that. Then what happens is sometimes an enthusiasm, we try to say computer has become better or faster. So in some feature it will become faster. It will do better. So like Shakuntala Devi could do a lot of calculation. But would you say she was a mathematician? No. So the point is that these are with technology moving more and more. The expectation now is, because it has been touched upon, that from classical computing, which is a solution on the side, this continues still with zeros and ones. But quantum computing goes on beyond zeros and one to a superposition of zeros and ones, which are called qubits. And then new features arise of superposition, entanglement, and quantum tunneling, and so on. And that's why quantum computers become far more powerful. There is a thought process of something called biological computers. So, for example, you know the DNA can store a lot more information than many of these devices that we were talking about. So, people are looking at seeing whether, as somebody said, once we understand the brain better, Maybe we will have computers which are based on the brain's understanding and trying to create it as outside the brain. Today, these are two different things with different features and attributes, but we use them for whatever is beneficial. So quantum is a, and in fact, many people are now proposing that the human brain is actually a quantum computer. And even this phenomenon of consciousness is a quantum phenomena. Till a few years ago, physicists who talked like that were made fun of, but Roger Penrose, who is one of the proponents of quantum consciousness, got a Nobel Prize two years back for his work on black holes. And therefore, this idea that the brain and consciousness could be a quantum phenomena is now not that ridiculed, though not yet fully accepted. Thank you, sir. So uh, let us see uh, what other uh, they say about the same thing. You might have heard the brain being compared to a computer, but how accurate is this? At first glance, they appear to have many similarities. The graphics card could be seen to be similar to the visual cortex, where visual information is processed by the brain. Similarly, the sound card might be seen as the auditory cortex, where we process auditory information in the brain. The hard drive, where memory is stored, might be the hippocampus. This is a key memory area. It's in the temporal lobe. The processor, or CPU, could be the prefrontal cortex which is associated with planning, thinking, and problem solving. We might also put RAM into the prefrontal cortex, as it could be seen as similar to our short-term or working memory. We might see the sensory cortex as a mouse or a keyboard, which collects input information from the outside world. And finally, the motor cortex, which coordinates our movements, might possibly be seen as similar to a monitor or speakers, the way in which a computer outputs to the world. So how accurate is this comparison? If humans and computers really do work the same, then we might expect similar abilities. But this really isn't the case. So here we have Oscar, he's six years old, and here we have a computer. And I've got two questions to ask them both. First question, what is 456 times 8,941? I've got no idea. Well, that's okay, because most adults will know the answer either. And the question is so simple for a computer that even a pocket calculator can do it. Okay, the second question. What number is shown here? 53. Correct. Now most computers wouldn't know the answer to this. In fact, these types of puzzles called captures 
have been specifically designed for SOC computers. So how do we account for this dramatic difference in what humans and computers can do? It turns out that brains and computers are actually quite different in terms of how they function, with memory being a good example of this. Computers work by collecting and storing information in units, much like you would store books on a bookshelf when they want to access data. They search through millions of files to find it. They either have the information or they don't. Brains, on the other hand, store memories in a very different way. Rather than each memory being held in a single storage container, they are represented by a network of neural activations across the brain. A banana, for example, might activate yellow, fruit, a certain smell, and a taste sensation. The more times the memory is activated, the stronger the specific pattern of activation becomes, and the stronger the memory. With billions of neurons and endless combinations of activation possible, the storage possibilities are enormous. We also know that thinking of the brain in terms of specific regions, like computer components, is not very accurate. In reality, the brain is one organ, and functions are not really divided into regions. The hippocampus, for example, is not the only part of the brain responsible for memory, and most other regions do several different jobs. So why can't computers work out what this says? Well, the computer hasn't seen the number 53 written in this particular way before, so it can't fit it into one of its neat boxes. Oscar, on the other hand, was not relying on a single representation of the number 53. So when he saw the numbers, it activated memories in all different contexts, fonts, and colours. He may never have seen the number 53 in this precise way before, but there's enough activation in the brain to tell him that it said 53 on the left. Humans are very good at generalising. They can get the gist of something, even when what they're looking at is new. This is not something that computers have been very good at. Well, up until now. Because the human brain is so successful, computer scientists have tried to copy the way it works. Artificial neural networks, inspired by those found in the brain, have been used to improve the performance of computers in areas such as image recognition. Precisely the area captures its point to stop computers now. By copying the way the brain works, fooling computers might not be so easy in the future. Okay, so this is a study uh, by Michael and Shirini. They have compared that the brain is a biological organ and it is not a digital computer. And neuroscience has discovered that the brain mediates between body and environment. It doesn't command the body. So let's uh, quickly uh, go through some of the facts and these are uh, taken from these sources that the average human brain is about 3 pounds each time our beats be our artery carry 20 to 25 percent of the blood to the brain every time we recall a memory or have a new thought we create a new connection in the brain there are around 100 billion neurons and they make only 10 percent of the brain and size doesn't matter in case of brain there is no evidence that a larger brain is smaller than a smaller brain uh, there are uh, like uh, one lakh miles of blood vessels, the distance around the world equator is uh, you can see now the, uh, the, can, uh, the biological composition of the air. And did you know that it is normal for your mind to wander? In a joint study by Harvard University, they found that this control the task unrelated thoughts such as daydreaming. They are almost active when the brain is at rest. And then there is another study, uh, New England Journal of Medicine. Here they were that uh, the about the uh, mind challenging activities less likely to develop. So it's always a better, and particularly uh, of course, it's very uh, you know relevant to this. And uh, the harder you think, more oxygen and fuel your brain will use for your blood up to the 50%. So our uh, the this is the part where the sorry okay sixty percent of the human brain is made of fat. Not only does it make the fattiest organ in the body, but these fatty acids are crucial for our brain function. Uh, it isn't fully formed until the age of twenty five. Uh, the development begins from the back of the brain and it works towards the front. Therefore, this frontal lobe, which controls the planning and reasoning, they are the last to strengthen and structure connections. 
its storage is unlimited particularly and there is a uh, myth which has been regularly refuted that we use only 10% capacity of our brain it's, uh, it's, uh, there is no uh, truth for me that people can use the 100% uh, of uh, those things uh, in the uh, the brain information it's uh, very fast uh, uh, from the neurons the electrical compound uh, impulses and if there is any disruption in that uh, uh, travel, then it can cause an epileptic seizure into the brain. On an average, the spinal growth cord, uh, which is the main you know, the conduit uh, uh, of connecting all the nervous tissues in the brain, uh, it stops growing there. So till then, it's very important that the development happens in that. So here, this is the main source of communication between the body and the, the control. And then there are like uh, multiple sclerosis and other things. They affect the functioning of that. And this is there. The neurologists, they have confirmed that brain is always active. Uh, in, in, in sleep or sometimes even, like I remember in 1984 when Mrs. Indra was assassinated, the doctors at AIMS, they tried to uh, they were getting the brain signals even eight hours after her physical death. They were trying to you know, do something that if it can be done. And this is another thing that uh, uh, Sphenopalatine uh, ganglionemia, the pain when the cold hits the receptors in the outer covering of brain, they call it meningitis. So it creates a dilation and contraction of arteries causing rapid onset headache. Uh, during when it is too much cold from here. A piece of brain tissue the size of grains of sand contains around 1 lakh neurons and 1 billion synapses. But a single damage to it can be a very life threatening situation as well. As a result, when the brain cells they die, the ability in that particular area it can be lost. Then this is quite interesting that uh, it generates about 23 watts of power, which is uh, so sleep appreciation can be marked. So, there, now there are certain myths. Uh, okay, I think the tea is ready, but uh, those things they are, it's a video. Let's see. Uh, uh, I'll quickly show that uh, how these things they affect, particularly a large population is affected by the spinal cord injury and this causes cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis and uh, the after effects of traumatic uh, uh, like uh, this is the AMS or logarithmic disease, the condition which affects the movement and the body. Then the patients who have lost the ability of doing some haptic things there, uh, it may be a result of uh, these effects. And then uh, 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 Luigi first showed that the brain has certain activity when they put a current to the uh, frog's legs, like uh, what is the person reaching. And these kind of electrical impulses they have been noted. EMS, NMES, FES, and electro simulation. This is a broad uh, overview of how the things they function. In a normal case, and the, the brain sends the signal to the body organ and it works, but if due to something it happens that there is a break in that, then with the help of certain uh, microprocessor chip or something that can be bypassed and then so the Scientific developments they are happening according to that. So this is how the brain works. It is all about the kind of waves which happens, and there are kind of electrodes. We put them either on the surface of the brain or on the brain or inside the brain. So three situations on the skull, on the brain, and inside the brain. These electrodes go and they note the kind of signals which is generated by them. These are the five kind of waves which are noted and all these waves they are important and they are related to a particular function of the brain. For example, delta is, uh, it occurs, uh, uh, it's a frequency during sleep, during coma. Theta waves, they are related to emotional stress, 
uh, disappointment, frustration like that. Alpha is for mental imaginary or uh, sensory simulation. Then beta for mental activity. Mu is for intention of movement. And lambda, which is for visual attention and vertex uh, with the uh, encephalopathy or epistemology and like those things, they are there. So uh, these are developments where Elon Musk is, and particularly his company Neuralink, uh, they have done uh, quite a good progress in this area. Where, and in fact, he has declared that I will be the first one to put a chip in my own brain. You know, I hope the public for that. You you can enroll that data. Uh, means the developments are going on in this field quite fast and there are many startups and other things they are coming up. So this is that work which I was telling somewhere in 1969, the operating condition like that. The head of the monkey and then the monkey operating the robot in the brain computer interface. Uh, since then, a lot of things they have uh, uh, they happened and Kevin created this uh, a kind of uh, uh, robotic in which through the sensors making the movement and then the robotic arm it can function. So a kind of development in cybernetics field. This is a typical uh, uh, flow chart of uh, how the signals they are generated and then the process and then various kind of applications depending on the kind of uh, the our, our uh, functioning is affected from there, that is. So it can be uh, related to visualization uh, or uh, sonification to auditory and the haptic vibration, electrical, thermal like that and olfactory which is pertaining to the uh, sense of uh, smell and those things. So these things they are captured and so you can see that the brain is quite a complex uh, uh, organ and the uh, developments are happening that if we can have a better understanding of this then we can have its implications in various areas. Let's have a break for tea and when we we'll come back then we will continue with the education aspect. <laughs> I think Camus was a French philosopher. We actually century the Kavo. Was the Dochi the British Kari to ask us? Ke Bashan ke reflect her team. Do not wait for the last judgment, it takes place every day. Dusra Kata, we continue to shape our personality all our life. If we knew ourselves perfectly, we should die. <coughs> perfectly, to Jani Ni Sakte. Or Dusri Jo Chiz Mein Batana Chata Tha, 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 Shayad, Tha, Tha, Tha. Ek Russian mathematician, who was not good over some He was jailed and spent 12 years in the jail. So during jail, tab ye bade bade computer nahi the. So he worked on the, at that time, jo bhi mathematics ka available sa nuclear jo chal mathematics ke hathe hai. So usne jo banaya, bade interesting ki ishmi, mera raam logo ne sab ne high school mein geometry mein, ye isosceles triangle agar hai, ye side proper hai. So, ये एंगल प्रूव करना होता है कि ये बराबर है, राइट सर? व्हाट इज़ द क्लासिकल मेथड ऑफ प्रूविंग इट? अगर किसी को याद हो अपना हाई स्कूल में नहीं होंगे तो छठी साल में भी होता है, हाँ, क्या होता है कि यहाँ से एक पेंडिंग होता है, देन यू सी कि ये दोनों ट्रायंगल जो है, इको बेलेंट, राइट? लेकिन मजे की बात ह कंप्यूटर को देख नहीं सकता तो कंप्यूटर ने क्या किया ये बड़ी मजेदार बात है ए बी सी 
computer doesn't have eyes, it cannot do any what you call construction. The computer form it looked at these are two triangles A, B, C and A, C, B. Nothing wrong. And both are equivalent. A, B, C and A, C, B are equivalent. Mathematically, the equivalency proof is equivalent. Hence, this angle is equal to this angle. Usne aur bhi both kaam kiya mere ko. I was trying to find out the name. Nucleus. Kya ni? Nucleus. Kya nucleus? Nucleus. Nucleus. Main naam nahi jaan raha. So I will not comment. So what is happening is, जो आपने intel की बात की थी, एक जो intel के ये जो हमारे कंप्यूटर में इसके बारे में एक बात जो है अक्सर भूल जाते हैं लोग वो ये है कि इंटेल डिड नॉट डिजाइन ए कंप्यूटर टू बिगिन इंटेल को एक स्विंग मशीन वालों ने ऑर्डर दिया था कि आप कुछ हमारी मशीन के लिए कुछ बनाइए एंड दे डिवाइड द फोर बिट कंप्यूटर पहला प्रोसेसर जैसे आप कहेंगे फोर बिट होता है एंड मेरे को भी न्यूज में ध्यान था कि कंप्यूटर बनाने के लिए और क्या इंस्ट्रूमेंट चाहिए इफ आई गोट माई यूनिवर्सिटी वेर आई वॉज वर्किंग देर आर स्टिल फोर बिट कंप्यूटर फोर बिट चिप जो प्रोसेसर जो भी कह दीजिए आई फोर गॉट इट फ्रॉम द इंटर तो हो गया काम था तो स्विंग मशीन वालों ने कहा जी ये हमारे किसी काम का नहीं सो दे अब क्या करें तो कुछ लोग ऐसे ही बैठे ठाले बैठे थे उन्होंने कहा क्या करते हैं कि इसको रिलीज कर देते हैं जस्ट लाइक जब आयरन ईव बने तो भगवान चिंता में थे रिलीज करें या ना करें तो उनका चलो रिलीज करते हैं इट एज ए स्मॉल इंस्ट्रक्शन माइक्रो इंस्ट्रक्शन जिसमें हम बोलते हैं कि चार उसमें आठ दस की है वेन पीपल फाउंडेशन और काम भी किए जा सकते हैं तो इट इज नॉट इंटरन प्रोपेटेड इट दे रिलीज इट दैन पीपल वी डो नॉट नो हु उन्होंने इसका इस्तेमाल करना शुरू किया फिर हुआ तो चार मिनट से तो कुछ नहीं होगा दैन दे मेरे एक मिनट दैन सिक्स उस जमाने में आजकल पता नहीं इंटर जो है बहुत बड़ी कंपनी समय ली थी तो डायरेक्टली तो बेचा ही नहीं थी वो क्या उन्होंने हेमिल्टन नाम की कंपनी हेमिल्टन ए वी ई मैंने और भी सामान उनसे सीखा तो वो हमारी रिक्वेस्ट जो उनको पास आने कर देते जो भी उस समय चार पाँच सौ हजार रुपया लगा हुआ मुझे याद नहीं तो ये धीरे धीरे एवोल्यूशन हुआ है और उस एवोल्यूशन में किसी एक का हाथ नहीं जो आपने अर्ली कंप्यूटर देखा हो तो उसमें जो डास वास होता था पीपल था सिंगल सिंगल प्रोसेस मशीन इसमें दो प्रोसेस नहीं हो सकते फिर कुछ लोगों को आइडिया आया कि भाई ये कैसे हो सकता है इससे क्या कहते हैं इसको प्रिंटर भी तो चलता है सो इट इज नॉट सिंगल प्रोसेस इट्स ए ड्यूल प्रोसेस के इससे माइक्रो प्रोसेसर भी बता रही कंपनी का नाम क्या है इंटर एंड नॉन इंटर जिन्होंने ये कंप्यूटर बनाया है हाँ नहीं डिजिटल नहीं ये इन लोगों को आईबीएम भी नहीं कहना जो भी है छोड़िए उन्होंने सोचा कि हम ये कैसे कर सकते हैं कि दो जने देन समी था अगर हमारा प्रिंटर कर सकता है तो भी देन अगेन वी गेम विद प्रोग्राम तो हम उसको कहते थे टर्मिनेट एंड स्टेर तो फिर प्रोग्राम हम लोगों ने लिखने शुरू किए ये प्रोग्राम में रहता था टर्मिनेट एंड स्टेर फिर उसमें होता था कोई की दबा दे तो प्रोग्राम चालू हो जाता तो अब तो खैर मल्टीप्रासर का बीसों हजारों हूँ प्रोग्राम ये धीरे धीरे हुआ एवोल्यूशन कभी किसी के दिमाग में आया और आपको वायरस तो पता ही कैसे बन गई दो भाई लाल हो उन्होंने कोई प्रोग्राम बनाया ये गेमिंग प्रोग्राम तो उन्होंने कंप्यूटर जो है साफ नहीं किया मेमोरी दे एंड एट दैट टाइम नो बडी न्यू ऑल्सो 
वो चले गए जब वो चले गए फिर किसी और ने चलाया तो आपको याद पता होना चाहिए कि कंप्यूटर का ऐसा काम नहीं करता इसका एक प्रोग्राम काउंटर होता है एक पर्टिकुलर एड्रेस से चलता है वो वो एड्रेस कहीं दूसरी जगह चला गया तो वायरस तो हिस्ट्री होगी वायरस
So if you are interested, you can get in touch with us. So thank you, sir. Thank you. One thing So probably we can break for tea and then come back and then I'll continue with some more slides. ये जो शुरू में डॉक्टर शर्मा ने बताया था कि अगर एक्टिविटी नहीं हो तो दिमाग काम नहीं करता है। बड़ी कल मैंने अच्छी मूवी देखी है मस्त में रहने का। तो वो इना उत्तो थी और जैकी श्राफ। वो बारह साल से जिससे बात नहीं करते हैं बिल्कुल वो वो जब उबर गए होते हैं जब वो दोनों एक दूसरे से मिलते हैं उनकी फिर नजदीक जो है या बैंक आउट करना शुरू करने का बोले मस्त रहने का मेकअप बेटे हाँ मेकअप मैं मैंने कल देखे आ नहीं तो आइए बड़ी मजा ना दिया मस्त रहने का I don't know if you have a good 